Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, AMD's Ryzen CPU launch, March 2nd. I am very excited to bring this video to you today because we now have concrete information on pricing, availability, and performance of the new AMD Ryzen CPUs. Now, if you don't know what AMD Ryzen is, in short, it is a brand new clean sheet design that brings AMD back into the performance realm of desktop computing. For too many years, they've sat the back seat to Intel while letting Intel collect all the money at the high end of the market. Well, that ends on March 2nd. It is very easy to use the term game changer or disruptor, and those terms get used by marketing people way too much. This time, it's appropriate, and I do not mean that in any way, shape, or form as hyperbole or over-exaggeration. It really is true this time. There are three CPUs that are going to be launching on March 2nd. More will be coming later, but the three CPUs launching are the Ryzen 7 1800X, the Ryzen 7 1700X, and the Ryzen 7 1700. All are 8-core, 16-thread processors. To give you a comparison as to what that's equal to, not the Skylake or Kaby Lake chips, but it's the Broadwell E high-end enthusiast desktop platform from Intel, the i7-6900K for $1,000 just for the processor. That is Intel's 8-core, 16-thread chip. But, a but AMD is not taking advantage of this by charging seven, eight, nine hundred dollars $900 for their CPUs. In fact, when Lisa, the CEO of AMD, came out with her announcement, she said, I want to disrupt the CPU industry. I was advised to sell these for more, but I want to turn this industry upside down, and she means it. The top-of-the-line processor, the 1800X, 8-core, 16-thread chip, $499. It gets better. It's faster than Broadwell E. In Cinebench 15 multi-threaded, it's 9% faster than the i7-6900K. Now that's one test to be sure, but if you're buying an 8-core processor, you're doing either live game streaming, video editing, 3D animation, content creation, you need a serious system. The fact that it will do things like Cinebench, like Handbrake, they did show a Handbrake test, and yes, it was faster in Handbrake as well, the fact that it's faster than Broadwell E for half the money is amazing. That's a game changer. The, basically, AMD has made the Broadwell E platform obsolete overnight, at least when it comes to price and performance. A $1,000 chip and a $500 chip with even equal performance, well, there's an, that's a no-brainer. That's an easy decision. Better performance on a $500 chip? That's amazing. Clock speeds. 3.6 gigahertz base clock speed, turbo boosting to 4.0, but it gets better. Now, all Ryzen CPUs are unlocked, but the X behind any of the chip's product names stands for extended frequency range, auto overclocking. If you give the CPU enough cooling and a good motherboard, it will auto overclock itself above 4 gigahertz. Now, you can still manually overclock it as high as you want. You can play with voltages and all the various settings in the motherboard's BIOS. But if you don't want to mess around with that and you simply go, well, I just want to get the maximum performance for the least amount of effort, put a good liquid cooler on the 1800X and it will go above 4 gigahertz with 8 cores and 16 threads for $499. I'm very excited about that. Now, I mentioned before that this is a launch on March 2nd. It's a hard launch. Pre-orders are now available at many online retailers. I will put the links to both Amazon and Newegg in the video description below. If you would like to get your new CPU and your new motherboard on March 2nd, you can order them down below and get those in just about a week. Now, if you don't want to spend $500 on a CPU, not to worry. They launched two lower level CPUs, both 8-core, both 16-thread. The 1700X has all the same features of the 1800X. The only difference is the base clock speed is 3.4 and the turbo is 3.8. 200 megahertz less on the base and 200 megahertz less on the turbo. Still with extended frequency range, still with auto overclocking, still unlocked and you can manually overclock it as far as you can get away with with your voltage and cooling. $399. Please note, that chip is less expensive than the 6-core Broadwell E. 
I own a six core Broadwell E, the i7 6800K. I paid $420 or so for it. It has a base clock speed of 3.4, turboing to 3.6, slower than the 1700X. And it has six cores instead of eight cores. And it costs more and it requires the X99 high-end platform. I paid $250 for the motherboard to install this CPU on. There are $150 Ryzen boards you can overclock on. So not only is the CPU less expensive at $399, not only does it have two more cores, but it installs on much less expensive motherboards. That is a win, win, win. That's a deal. Now there's one more CPU below that, but before I mention, I will point out that all of the X CPUs, the 1800X and the 1700X, do not come with any type of cooling. You have to provide your own cooling. And if you're buying either of those CPUs, please, seriously, put a 240 or 280 millimeter liquid cooler on them. If you're spending four to $500 on a CPU, $100 for a liquid cooler is not unreasonable. You will get better auto overclocking, better performance out of your chip. Now, having said that, they did provide one more option, which is the Ryzen 7 1700 non-X. Don't be confused, unlocked processor, you can manually overclock it, but it will not auto overclock above its default turbo speed, you have to manually do it. However, it does come with cooling. It comes with AMD's excellent Wraith cooler. This is much better than what you get in the cheaper CPUs or even what Intel provides, which are serviceable, but I wouldn't use them on a high-end processor. AMD's Wraith cooler has been covered before. They came out with it last year. It provides much better cooling than the other stock coolers on the market that the CPU companies provide. And it's very quiet, 34 decibels. Very, very quiet. If you don't plan to overclock manually, if you plan, for example, to install it on a less expensive board, say in the $100 to $130 range, use it, be happy with it, it'll work fine. $329 including the cooler. You can easily spend $30 on a nice air cooler all on your own. So think of it as $300 for the CPU and $30 for a nice air cooler. Eight cores, 16 threads, base clock speed of 3.0 gigahertz, which sounds low, but turbo boost to 3.7. It is only 100 megahertz slower on the turbo boost then the 1700X, and remember, unlocked so if you give it really good cooling, if you put it on a liquid cooler, you should probably hit four gigahertz on it. That's not confirmed because I don't have one, but I would be surprised if you don't get at least a couple hundred megahertz out of it if you give it a good liquid cooler. Now, AMD is going to be launching four and six core versions of Ryzen. They are not launching them next week on March 2nd. Those will be coming later at some point, maybe second quarter. No information about pricing, availability on those chips has been released. I don't have any information on them. All I can guess is that they're going to basically have a full product stack from four core, four thread to four core, eight thread to six core, basically to compete with the entire Intel line. But there's no information on those. They'll be coming at some point in the future. So for right now, at the end of February, beginning of March, the question is, should you buy a Ryzen? Should you consider buying one of these CPUs from Intel? What should you do? Well, first of all, if you are planning on buying anything in the Broadwell E-Line, stop, go buy a Ryzen. Even if in your application, the Ryzen chips are 10% slower, it isn't gonna matter because they'll still walk all over everything from the Broadwell E-Line at the same price and core count just because of the advantages I just described. That is at current prices, $420 for the six core chip and $1,000 for the eight core chip. If Intel drops the pricing, that may change. And if they drop the pricing, I'll make an updated video and we'll talk about that. But for the moment at that pricing, go buy Ryzen. What about Kaby Lake? What about the i7-7700K? That is a more complicated question and answer. And the reason for that is in single threaded tasks, KB Lake is still gonna win. Most notably during AMD's presentation, they did compare both multi-threaded Cinebench with single threaded performance with Broadwell E and Ryzen. In single threaded performance, Broadwell E and Ryzen are neck and neck. They're basically dead even. They did compare Ryzen to the i7-7700K in Cinebench. 
only in multi-threaded. They did not show a single threaded. That was, a, in my mind, a very clear, it's not an omission, they did it on purpose. What it means is that in single threaded tasks, the i7-7700K is still going to win. The question is, does it matter? In 2017, are you doing enough things that are either single or dual threaded that only use four or fewer cores to where you're gonna spend 350 on a CPU, but you don't have any use for more than four cores? Here's the problem with that. If you need an i7, that's because you want the hyper-threading because you want eight threads. If you don't need eight threads, buy the i5 for $110 less. This is 350, the i5 is uh, $240. If you only need four threads, buy an i5, you'll save a bunch of money. But, but wait a minute, the extra threads help. I mean, Battlefield 1, for example. Battlefield 1 is not faster on an i7 7700K than it is on an i5 7600K. The average frame rate is about the same. The minimum frame rate's better. It's smoother because those extra threads allow the game to run smoother. It, it reduces the dips that you get while playing. Well, don't you think if a game uses eight threads that it would use an eight core chip much better than a four core chip with hyper threading? I am very much looking forward to testing the eight core Ryzen chip against my i7-7700K, which I do have running at 5 gigahertz. It's warm at that temperature, but it does run stable at 5 gigahertz. So does the 8-core Ryzen chip at 4 gigahertz run faster or slower in Battlefield 1 than an i7-7700K at 5? I promise you I will test that and we will see. That being said, this does not come with a cooler and it's $350. The, the, seven, the Ryzen 7 1700 is $20 less and it includes a good cooler. If you're gonna use that cooler and install it on a less expensive motherboard and not worry about overclocking so much, it's less expensive with double the core count. Think about that for a minute. Eight threads, 16 threads, the 16 thread chip is less money and in multi-threaded tasks, it'll be much faster. And in single-threaded tasks, it might only be 10 or 20% slower. <sighs> Intel, you need to drop your price. In fact, if I was to give Intel advice, I would say this chip needs to go to $299 at the most. This chip needs to go to $199. This chip needs to go to a whole lot less than it is. And that's actually probably fine where it is for now. We'll see what Intel's response is. A couple more important pieces of information. Platform support. 82 motherboards are launching from every major motherboard company on launch day. There will be hundreds available by the end of the year, but the main boards that are launching from all the big companies, ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, Biostar, ASRock, and many more, will be launching with both non-overclockable motherboards as well as the overclockable versions. Not all motherboards will overclock CPUs. It's an important point that I'll cover when I actually get boards and get the CPUs and can do reviews, but they will be ranging from very reasonable prices to very expensive prices depending upon the features that you want. It is a very complete line of boards. Systems. Do you not want to build a computer? Do you want to buy one? 19 boutique high-end computer builders will have systems available on launch day. Cybertron, CyberPower PC, Origin, um, iBuyPower, and many others. I don't want to leave anybody out, but they are going to all have systems available on day one with Ryzen, with liquid coolers, with high-end graphics cards, with high-end motherboards, the whole nine yards. Clearly, the industry sees what AMD has done here. The manufacturers have gotten there. The motherboard companies have seen it. I've seen it. I, after watching the presentation, watching the benchmarks, and then watching the other videos that have been put out. Now, I unfortunately did not get invited to the press event. If you're thinking that I secretly went to the press event and didn't film a video while I was there, yeah, no. I wish I had, but uh, Paul with Paul's Hardware and Kyle with Bitwit and Linus with Linus Tech Tips all went. By the way, I'll link their videos in the description below because they're worth a watch. They're interesting. And uh, especially, I thought it was quite funny when um, 
Austin Evans decided to uh, video bomb uh, Linus when he was trying to do a video and he stuck up behind him and said something. That's quite funny. Watch for that in Linus's video. And then watch Austin Evans. I'll link to his down below as well because then he films the reverse of it. I don't know whether they staged that or not, but it was quite funny. In any case, March 2nd, links to Amazon and Newegg for the CPUs, links to a couple of the motherboards down there as well. I'll link to a couple of the boutique builders. I will link to the video, the presentation video from Lisa, the CEO of AMD. She did an excellent job with the video, presented a lot of information. It was very easy to follow. She's clearly an engineering and tech person at heart. Uh, she says it, I believe it, just watching her. She really is excited about this. This is one of the most important CPU launches in 10 plus years. I'm very excited about it. And I don't want to come across as just an AMD fanboy or somebody who's ragging on Intel here because I've been an Intel supporter for a long time because their CPUs are so fast. Some of AMD's prior options weren't as quick. I love good deals. I love performance for the money. And I don't care which company provides it. I will support whichever company provides me with the most performance for the least amount of dollars. Right now, that looks like that may very well be rising this year, unless Intel comes back with something impressive. So, challenge on you, Intel. Impress us with your response. Show us that you see what Ryzen is, and either lower the prices or come out with something new or do something to make us all go wow. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big, huge red button directly below this video. Questions and comments in the comment section below. And as always, check out the video description. That's where all the good stuff is. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in a week with some benchmarks.